Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, we are going to go through a lesson on graphing linear equations in slope-intercept form. Our objectives today are that you, the student, will find the slope of a line. You will use the slope-intercept form of a linear equation to identify slope and y-intercept, and you will use slope-intercept form of a linear equation to graph a line. As we proceed through the lesson today and you are solving problems, I want you focused on how you can describe the graph of the equation using y equals mx plus b slope-intercept form. Let's review slope of a line. The slope m of a non-vertical line passing through two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the ratio of the rise, change in y, to the run, change in x. Now this is a lot of information, let's break it down. So m is just a variable used to reference slope for a line. We say non-vertical line because a vertical line has an undefined slope. We'll review this later in the lesson. And you can also use the formula for slope and we have to identify this is point one. So the subscript one just means take a point on the line and name it point one. Take a second point and name it point two. Slope is a ratio. You probably learned first to find slope by finding rise over run. We then build on that and understand that rise is our change in y. It's our vertical change. And if we have two points, we can name them 2, point 0.2 and point 0.1 and subtract the y values of those points, the y coordinates. And run can be described as the change in x and the difference between the two x coordinates. So here I have my line, point 0.1, point 0.2, and these are interchangeable. Typically you'll see in a textbook that they'll name the one on the left, one, then two, because you read a graph left to right. Our rise is our vertical distance, our change between the y-coordinates, and our run is our horizontal distance between two points, or the difference in x-coordinates. When a line rises from left to right, as this one is doing, left to right it's increasing, the slope is positive. If the line left to right falls, then the slope would be negative. So we are going to use this graph to describe the slope of this line and then find the slope. So this line has a positive slope because it's rising from left to right. And we're going to find the slope now. So it says here it's 2 thirds and we can verify that. So you could rise 4 and run 6, which simplifies to 2 thirds. You may have noticed that it passes through the origin rise 2, run 3. So if you go to the two closest points that pass through exact points on your graph, then you don't have to simplify. And we can also use the points. So again, they name this point 1 and point 2. Y coordinates, 2, subtract negative 2, which is 4. X coordinates, 3, subtract negative 3, which is 6, and simplifies to 2 thirds. Let's try another one. So now we're going to describe the slope of this line. It's falling left to right, so it has a negative slope. And I can find the slope in a variety of ways. I can rise 3 and run negative 2, or I could rise negative 3 and run positive 2 for a slope of negative 3 halves. We could also use the points 2, subtract negative 1, which is 3, all over 0, subtract 2, which is negative 2, for a slope of negative 3 halves. Here, they did the, the points the opposite of what I just described. They used negative 1, subtract 2, 2, subtract 0, still negative 3 halves. Your turn. Pause. Describe and find the slope. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. The slope of this line is negative because it falls left to right, and the slope is negative 2 fifths. Rise 2, run negative 5. Or 3, 
subtract 1 is 2. Negative 4 subtract 1 is negative 5. The slope is negative 2 fifths. Try another one. Pause, come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. The slope of this line is positive because it's rising from left to right. And we could rise two, run three. You could have risen four and run six. Four six simplifies to two thirds. Or you could have said three subtract negative one, which is four. Three subtract negative three, which is six. And four sixths simplifies to two thirds. We can also find slope from a table. So the points in this table represent a line. We need to find the slope of this line. So we're going to use the idea of slope being the change in y all over the change in x. So we can do this by finding in our table our change in y. y values are decreasing by 6 as x values are increasing by 3. So our change in y, negative 6, over our change in x, 3, simplified, negative 2 is our slope. Your turn. Use the slope, the table, to find the slope of the line. Pause, come back and hit play. Welcome back. So we are going to use the idea of change in y over change in x to find our slope. Our change in y is 0. There is no change. It remains 2. Our change in x is as y is not changing, x is increasing by 2. So 0 divided by 2 is 0. So I know that this slope is 0, telling me that this is a horizontal line and will pass through the y-axis at 2. Try this one. Find the slope. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So our change in y, it's increasing by 5. As x is increasing by 2, so our slope is 5 halves, 5 over 2. You could write it as 2.5. I typically ask my students to leave it as an improper fraction so that when we're graphing, they can see the rise and the run. Here's another one. Pause, find the slope, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So our change of y is it's increasing by 3 as our x remains unchanged. So we have our change 3 of y over our 0 change in x, which is undefined. 3 divided by 0 is undefined, telling me that this is a vertical line and we'll pass through the y-axis at 5. Let's review how we can describe slope. You could have a positive slope. The line would rise from left to right. Negative slope, it would fall left to right. A zero slope, telling you you have a horizontal line. And an undefined slope, describing a vertical line. Now we have slope-intercept form. A linear equation that is written in y equals mx plus b is in slope-intercept form, where the slope of the line is represented by m and the y-intercept is represented by b. So slope describes the steepness of our line or the rate of change. The y-intercept shows us or tells us where the line will cross the y-axis. x is an independent variable y is the dependent variable, and any x value with its coordinating y value is a coordinate or an ordered pair describing a specific point on the line, reminding you that any point on a line is a solution to a linear equation. So now that we know what slope-intercept form is, we are going to use this formula, this form, to, to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So this equation is written in slope-intercept form. Sometimes you will hear it solved for y, and that's how we know it's in slope-intercept form. 
we can identify that the coefficient of x, m, is our slope 3, and our y-intercept is our constant, negative 4. Remember that whatever operation comes before this identifies that this is negative 4. Now we're going to find the slope of this. It's solve for y, so we know it's in slope-intercept form. Our slope here is 0. We know that because the x term, 0 times x, would be 0. And then 4.2 is our y-intercept. So I know that this linear equation is written in slope-intercept form, and it's the graph of a horizontal line passing through the y-axis at 4.2. So this equation is not written in slope-intercept form. So the first thing I need to do is solve for y. I'm going to do that by adding 7x to both sides, leaving me negative 3y equals 7x subtract 5. I'm now going to divide each term by negative 3, giving me y equals negative 7 thirds x add 5 thirds. Negative 5 divided by negative 3 is positive 5 thirds. So now that I've written this equation in slope-intercept form, I can identify that the slope is negative 7 thirds and the y-intercept is positive 5 thirds. I would like you to pause, identify the slope and the y-intercept. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So this is solve for y, it's in slope-intercept form. The slope is negative 9, and the y-intercept is 23. Go ahead and pause, identify the slope and the y-intercept. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So it's solve for y, so it's in slope-intercept form. Our slope is 0. Our y-intercept is negative 4. So again, I know because the slope is 0 that this is a horizontal line passing through the y-axis at negative 4. Go ahead and hit pause. Identify the slope and the y-intercept. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So hopefully first you solve for y to put it in slope-intercept form. Subtract x from both sides. Divide all terms by 2. In slope-intercept form, this is y equals negative 1 half x subtract 4. So this is negative 1 divided by 2 gives me negative 1 half for my slope. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So I can identify that the slope is negative 1 half and the y-intercept is negative 4. Now let's review how to graph slope-intercept form. So the first thing I want to do is make sure it's in slope-intercept form, and this is not. This is actually in standard form. So I'm going to solve for y by subtracting 3x from both sides. Now it's in slope-intercept form. I'm going to start by identifying that the y-intercept is 3 and plot that on my graph. Using the slope of negative 3, rise negative 3, run 1, plot my point. Rise positive 3, run negative 1, and plot another point. Noting that my slope is negative, so I know that my line needed to fall left to right. And then I can identify that my x-intercept is 1, the point where it crosses the x-axis. Your turn. Go ahead and graph this linear equation, and then use your graph to identify the x-intercept. Pause, come back, and hit play. Welcome back. So you didn't need to do anything as far as rewriting the equation because it's already in slope-intercept form. And now we could graph our y-intercept, negative 5, and then graph additional points. Rise 5, run 1. Rise 5, run 1. And our x-intercept is 1, the point where the line crosses the x-axis. Here's another one. Graph and identify the x-intercept. Pause and then return and hit play. Welcome back. 
So first I'm going to solve this equation for y and put it in slope intercept form by subtracting 2x from both sides. y equals negative 2x subtract 2. My y-intercept is negative 2. I'm going to rise 2, run negative 1, rise negative 2, run 1, and I have my line, and my x-intercept is negative 1, the point where the line crosses the x-axis. Let's review function notation for slope-intercept form. So a linear function h models a relationship in which the dependent variable increases four units for every two units the independent variable increases. The graph h when h at zero equals negative four. Then I want you to identify the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept of the graph. So we'll do the first one together. So step one would be to identify the y-intercept. I know the y-intercept comes from the information that they've given you that h0 equals negative 4. This represents the point, remember, h of x, so our input is 0, our output is negative 4. So when our independent variable is 0, our dependent variable is negative 4, giving me my y-intercept, the ordered pair 0, negative 4. Step two, we're going to use the rate of change, the dependent variable. They tell, told us that the dependent variable increases every four. The dependent is my y. So increase of a y of four for every two of the variable, the independent variable increasing. Four over two. So I can use my slope, four over two, or simplify to two over two, two, one two, one, using my slope to graph the line. And then step three, identify that my x-intercept is two, the point where the line crosses the x-axis. Your turn. Now you have the linear function g. I would like you to graph the function g, identify the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept of the graph. Pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Step one was to identify the y-intercept. They gave you that here. So we have the ordered pair 0, negative 6, our y-intercept. Then we are told that the slope is increasing every 3 for every 2 units that the independent decreases. Rise 3, negative 2. Rise 3, negative 2. Rise 3, negative 2. So I know that my slope is negative 3 halves. And I can identify that my x-intercept is negative 4, the point where the line crosses the x-axis. That's talking slope. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up or join the channel. Subscribe. And I hope to see you back.